Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is charge interactions. Today we're going to learn what the three types of charge interactions are and how you can use observations of charge interactions to determine the charge on an object. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Here's something you can do at home. Get a balloon and blow it up and give it a rub against some animal fur. A wool sweater or even your hair would do. Then bring that balloon near some paper bits on a table, and as the balloon's brought near, it will lift the paper bits up off the table. The balloon is like any charged object. It interacts with other objects to exert a push or pull upon them, even when held a distance away. This action at a distance is referred to as an electrical force, or an electrostatic force, denoted by the symbol F, E-L-E-C-T. It's a type of force that we refer to as a non-contact force. It exists even when objects don't make physical contact with one another. The electric force can be attractive or it can be repulsive. Attractive forces will pull objects towards one another. Repulsive forces will push them away. You may have heard of the saying that opposites attract and likes repel. This saying describes what I refer to as charge interactions. It describes the first two of three rules I'll be discussing regarding charge interactions. It goes something like this. Objects that have the opposite type of charge will attract one another, and objects that have the same type of charge will repel one another. This diagram shows balloons A and B hanging from the ceiling, and they're pushing away from one another. They're repelling one another. This tells us that balloons A and B have the same type of charge. We don't know if balloons A and B are both positive or if they're both negative, but we do know that they're both charged and charged with the same type of charge. This diagram shows balloons B and C hanging from the ceiling, and they're drawing near to one another. They're attracting each other. This tells us if these two objects are charged, that they're charged with the opposite type of charge. That is, one would be positive and the other would be negative. The third type of charge interaction is the one least heard of. It goes like this. A charged object and a neutral object will attract one another. An example would be a charged balloon brought near neutral paper bits on a table would lift those paper bits up off the table. In physics labs, paper bits are often used as neutral objects. When you bring an object near the neutral paper bits, if it lifts them off the table, you know that the object is charged. We now have three charge interactions. They go like this. Objects with the opposite type of charge will attract one another. Objects that have the same type of charge will repel one another. And any charged object, whether it's positive or negative, and a neutral object will attract one another. Electrical forces follow the same force laws as any other force types, like Newton's third law, which states that forces are the result of mutual and simultaneous interactions between objects, resulting in a pair of forces that are of equal strength in opposite directions. So when we see balloons A and B attracting one another, we know there's two forces. One of them is on A, and the other is on B. There's the force of B pulling A to the right, and then there's the force of A pulling B to the left. The same is true of repulsive forces. You know, when you see two balloons repelling, that there's two forces involved. There's the force of balloon D pushing balloon C to the left, and there's the force of balloon C pushing balloon D to the right. Whenever there are electrostatic interactions, you know that there are a pair of forces that are of equal strength and in opposite directions. As we often say, forces come in pairs. When you inspect the rules of charge interactions, the one thing you'll notice is that the word attract shows up twice, in rule number one and in rule number three. But the word repel shows up only once. For this reason, when you observe repulsions between two objects, it gives you more extensive information about the charges on those objects. For instance, when you see balloons A and B repelling one another, you know that both balloons are charged and you know that both balloons are charged with the same type of charge. You just don't know if they're both positive or if they're both negative. On the other hand, if you see balloons C and D attracting one another, you don't know as much. All you really know is that at least one of those balloons is charged. That is, balloon C could be charged and balloon D could be neutral, according to rule number three. Or balloon C could be charged and balloon D could be charged as well with opposite type of charge 
according to rule number one. But you don't know which it is because the word attract shows up twice in our list of rules. You don't know if A is charged or if B is charged or if both is charged. You don't know if one is charged, whether it's charged positive or negative. You don't know if both are charged, if one of them is positive and the other is negative, or vice versa. Observing attraction provides much less information about the charges of the objects compared to the observations of repulsions. Now let's put these three rules to practice by filling in the table in which we indicate the charge of balloon A and of balloon C based upon the observations as to how they interact with balloon B. We know that balloon B is positive, so when we try to figure out the charge of A, we notice that it's attracting balloon B. So there's two reasons it could attract. One of the reasons is that balloon A could be charged oppositely of balloon B. That is, it could be negative. That would be rule number one above. But the other reason it could attract is if balloon A was neutral. That would cause an attraction according to rule number three. So we're left with two possibilities of balloon A. It could be negative or it could be neutral. When it comes to balloon C, we notice that it repels balloon B. And there's only one reason two objects would repel. They have the same type of charge. So we could conclude that balloon C must have a positive charge. Here is a similar question in which we must use the rules of charge interactions to fill out the table and show the charges of A and C. But this time, balloon A has two interactions. It interacts with the positively charged balloon B, and we notice it's attractive, which would lead us to temporarily conclude that balloon A must be either negative or neutral. But then we look at the second interaction of balloon A and observe it's repelling an object. We check our rules and we realize there's no way a neutral object could repel another object. They would only attract. So we can rule out the possibility that balloon A is neutral. It must be charged the opposite of balloon B. That is, balloon A must be negative. Then when we go to determine the charge on balloon C, we observe that it's repelling balloon A, which we've just determined is negative. There's only one reason two objects would repel. Rule number two, they must have like charge. So C must have the like charge of A. C must have a negative charge. I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I do, could I ask you to help us out? If you like the video, could you give us a like or subscribe to the channel or leave a question and comment in the comment section below. Now here's your action plan. Here's three resources from our website. The links to each one is in the description section of this video. There's a concept builder, a Minds on Physics mission, and a tutorial page. Any one could help make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.